Welcome to this course on uh, the keys to supernatural ministry. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for giving us this time in your presence and opening up your word to us. We pray that we will be equipped and uh, that God, we will walk in everything that you have in store for us, Lord. Father, we pray for the fullness um, of the Godhead, uh, Lord, to be um, released, Father God, uh, in and through each one of us. Lord, we commit this entire session and uh, ask Holy Spirit that you would bring understanding, Lord, to every heart. Uh, we thank and praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, so far we've uh, talked about some of the keys that we can understand and uh, use for us to see the manifestation of the supernatural. We've covered three so far. One was understanding the spiritual realm. Uh, second um, was just a moment. So understanding the spiritual realm, second was faith. We also talked about the power of the word of God and how uh, we ourselves must be equipped with the word and at the same time make the effort to teach people the word because faith will come from the word of God. And uh, you know, I just tried sharing some examples which were small and big and I hope uh, that has helped you um, in, in knowing how to use all of these keys. Today we have come to the fourth key, which is the renewed mind. And we'll do our best to cover that entire section. I've posted the notes for us on Google Classroom. Kindly um, open it up and follow along. Let me also see if I can project it for our benefit. Please give me a moment. No, it should be fine. I'll just, yeah, it opened up just now. Okay, this will make it easier as we talk about the renewed mind. So as we see in uh, Isaiah 55, uh, verses 6 through 11, we understand that God has a way of thinking. God has a way of processing things. God... Um, you know, has a way of, of doing things. And we may or may not necessarily um, be in sync with what he is up to and what he's thinking. So, um, you know, we, we are told there that uh, we his ways are higher, his thoughts are higher than our thoughts. So here is the important thing. For us as believers, we need a renewed mind to, to think the way God thinks. So in our own thinking, we will not be able to align ourselves you know, to what God wants to do. So when we look at uh, some passages of scripture, they teach us about the natural mind, okay, which we have as uh, as human beings. All human beings have the natural mind and we can function with that natural mind. Uh, but as believers, we have something more and that is the spiritual mind or the renewed mind that one needs to walk in. It is when we are functioning out of our renewed mind that we can see the 
supernatural manifest uh, for example you know if i face a circumstance where there are many limitations my natural mind would pro as you know in a very logical way and come to the conclusion uh, that there are several limitations and we have only you know the scope for doing x y or z or you know maybe the natural mind would logically come to the conclusion that nothing more can be done this situation is impossible let's uh, you know let let's not expect anything to come out of that particular situation but through the renewed mind or the god uh, way of thinking i can look at situations with limitation and expect a miracle to take place okay. we have several such miracles that jesus performed when he went to the wedding at cana we saw how he turned the water into wine so logically the wine had run out and the uh, the couple and the families involved would have uh, experienced shame right from uh, all the visitors because they were supposed to have enough wine and they didn't have it but jesus in that situation works through the renewed mind or the god way of thinking where there is a new possibility and that possibility is a miracle where water turned into wine so the supernatural took place but if one went with the logical or the natural mind they would have come to the conclusion that we don't have resources okay wine is over it will take many years to produce wine and thereby uh, we cannot you know uh, manage uh, this situation except by purchasing new wine or you know some uh, such other ways so you see how the natural mind uh, has certain limitations it's not about natural mind being good or bad definitely it's good because god has given us the natural mind but then for us as believers when we want to see the supernatural we need a renewed mind we need to be able to think the way god thinks in a given situation so let's quickly look at first uh, corinthians chapter 2 verses 11 through 16 uh, in today's session i would like to request uh, you know different ones of us to quickly turn to the passages that i mention and read it out aloud so first let's start with first corinthians 2 verses 11 through 16 could somebody read it first corinthians chapter 2 verse 11 to 16 that's right for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him even so no one knows the things of god except the spirit of god now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from god that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by god these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches but which the holy spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned but he who is spiritual judges all things yet he himself is rightly judged by no one for who has known the mind of the lord that he may instruct him but we have the mind of christ amen Amen. Amen. Thank you so much uh, uh, for reading that. So we noticed in this passage, verse fourteen, it says, "But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness to him, nor can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned." So there is a reference to the natural man or the natural mind. You know the normal human way in which you and i would process things so even if you go back to uh, the old testament you see that the red sea was parted by god but if one were to go with their natural mind they would have never 
seen that God is even able to part the Red Sea to bring his people out of Egypt. Now, if you um, think about Joshua and the walls of Jericho, the wall of Jericho, uh, one would have never been able to foresee that you know, as people worshipped and walked around that wall, that the wall would come crashing down. So these were all the solutions um, that came from the mind of God. It was the leading that came according to the will of God. But the natural man or the natural mind, you know, as First um, Corinthians 2.14 says, it says, the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. So it the natural mind, in other words, thinks very differently. And it may be quite hard to accept what the spiritual you know, has to offer. So we recognize that as human beings, we have the freedom to function with the natural mind, which is not necessarily bad or wrong. You know, we just use our wisdom and our logic. But for believers, there is one more uh, you know uh, a, one more uh, mind that you and i can tap into which is known as the renewed mind or the spiritual mind could we kindly uh, turn to romans 12 and verse 2 please i request uh, someone in the class to read it romans 12 and verse 2 Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Okay. So we are encouraged to be renewed in our thinking. Um, you know, according to the word of God. And we've seen in the earlier passage as well that, um, you know, spiritual things are compared with spiritual things. And there are certain things which are spiritually discerned. The things of God are spiritually discerned. And the spiritual mind in us, earlier, Romans 12, 2, it talked about be renewed. No, have a renewed mind. Uh, so this renewed mind is able to discern the spiritual things in God. So as a believer, I can walk with my natural mind and not use my renewed mind at all or my spiritual mind at all. Or I understand the value of the renewed mind and walk even in the renewed mind and the spiritual mind. Okay. So... Um, uh, the good thing to do is to constantly put our spiritual mind to uh, work or um, go by the spiritual mind. Now, unfortunately, there is a third category of mind uh, which believers can also have. And this is definitely not a good mind for us to carry. And the Bible refers to it as the carnal mind or a way of thinking which has to do more with uh, pursuing the things according to the flesh or the desires that our body has and our soul has. So when we go after the flesh and the things of the flesh, what happens is our mind that that is functional is the carnal mind. Okay. Now this carnal mind does not glorify God scriptures talk about that and worse still when we go by the carnal mind we open up doors to uh, the works of the enemy so could somebody please read romans chapter 8 verses 5 through 8 romans, romans 8. yeah 8 5 to 8 for those who live according to flesh set their minds on the things on the flesh but those who live according to the spirit the things of the spirit for to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace and verse 7 also because the carnal mind is enmity against god for it is not subject to the law of god nor indeed can be yes thank you zeli i think uh, that's fine and it's quite clear there isn't it that uh, the carnal mind uh, definitely does not yield 
the fruit of the spirit like peace and joy and uh, all the goodness that god wants to bring into our lives but when we go by the carnal mind it says it's enmity against god and that it only results in death okay or it's very destructive in other words so uh, as believers we have to watch out we can function through the natural mind uh, and better still we can function through the spiritual mind even in this passage we saw how it's good to be spiritually minded and not carnally minded so function with the spiritual mind and when required you could um, function with the natural mind but definitely not the carnal mind so it's a choice for every believer now uh, let's uh, look at you know one incident in john chapter 6 uh, verses 1 through 13 so if someone can quickly read out uh, that passage you know, i'll go ahead and explain what we observe there john chapter 6 verses 1 through 13 John chapter 6, verse 1 to 13. Sometime after this, Jesus crossed to the far shore of the Sea of Galilee, that is the Sea of Tiberias, and a great crowd of people followed him because they saw the miraculous signs he had performed on the sea. Then Jesus went up on a mountainside and sat down with his disciples. The Jewish Passover feast was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming towards him, he said to Philip, where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, eight, eight month wages would not buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, make the people sit down. There was a plenty of grass in that place and the men sat down, about 5,000 of them. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks and then distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all, when they, when they had, all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, gather the pieces that are left over, let nothing be wasted. So they gathered gathered them and filled 12 baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over uh, by those who had eaten. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Jeffina, for reading that. Um, we see in this passage that there was a crisis okay, when uh, Jesus went out to minister to the multitudes. Uh, people were hungry okay and at this point uh, there was a question which he asked the disciples he scriptures tell us that he already knew what he was going to do but to test them he asked this question so verse 5 then jesus lifted up his eyes and seeing a great multitude coming toward him he said to philip and he specifically spoke to philip where shall we buy bread that these may eat so a question is being asked about what to do in this situation there isn't enough food to feed the multitudes so here is the response of philip in verse 7 philip answered him 200 den denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may have a little so how is philip functioning in this situation what philip said was quite practical isn't it philip uses his natural mind and he begins to calculate so he looks at the number of people uh, and maybe you know he was good at math so he did this quick calculation and uh, came up with a figure which is 200 uh, denarii worth of bread is not sufficient for them so he is thinking very practically he's thinking very logically uh, and uh, very specifically now he's only mentioned bread and the amount of money which it would take to purchase that kind of bread uh, what about you know something else to go with the bread now we know that uh, in the common um, miracles that jesus did there was also fish which was given to the people but then you know whatever was possible 
uh, at that point maybe philip uh, knew that this is a very tough circumstance we are limited as far as uh, our, you know money is concerned time is concerned so we can think of the bare minimum or the basic which is some bread and even for that 200 denarii will not be sufficient uh, now even if they had the money let's think about this even if they had the money they would have had to figure out where they would go and purchase okay uh, so were there enough bakeries around the area where uh, jesus was ministering to these people and even if there were bakeries who would be the people who would actually go and purchase the bread okay uh, and if at all they had sufficient volunteers to go bring the bread how much time would it take for the bread to be brought to the spot and then distributed to so what's happening this is the natural mind the natural mind begins to process in a very logical way uses the five senses and comes to conclusions was philip wrong in assessing uh, the situation in this manner not at all he wasn't he was just being a normal human being and this is what many of us tend to do you know when we uh, encounter especially challenges okay but let's look at another person here uh, andrew uh, verse 8 one of his disciples andrew simon peter's brother said to him there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish but what are they among so many right so andrew comes to jesus and he makes a mention of a very small lunch five barley loaves and what else two small fish okay why did andrew present this to jesus we are not clear but maybe you know his spiritual mind was functional at that time and somehow having walked with jesus all along and seeing the miracles and uh, you know um, the healings that jesus performed and listening to the teachings of jesus the renewed mind of andrew said that yes we have a limitation but we also have god in our midst we have the son of god in our midst we have somebody who can do the impossible okay uh, right here with us so maybe maybe if i can pray okay we i'm just calling it prayer because he's talking he's communicating to jesus he just goes and tells jesus god we have limited resources within himself perhaps from his renewed mind he thought that limited resources are not limited for god this is the same jesus who turned the water into wine you know it has happened earlier in uh, john chapter 2 let's see what jesus can do with five barley loaves and two fish so you see the contrast here there are two ways of thinking the natural mind that philip uses and the renewed mind or the spiritual mind that andrew is working with now what happens next obviously jesus swings into action and uh, jesus breaks the bread he gives thanks he breaks the bread uh, he gives it into the hands of the disciples and then when the disciples start handing it over to the multitude which had gathered the miracle takes place you know the uh, the food is enough for everyone and we read in um, verse i'll read from verse 11 onwards and jesus took the loaves and when he had given thanks he distributed them to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down and likewise of the fish as much as they wanted okay so look at this it says how much did the people take as much as they wanted so the food was distributed um, to the disciples and the disciples to those sitting down and we are aware you know the multitude the term mul great multitude followed him we are told in verse 2 so obviously it was like this huge crowd which was before jesus and the disciples and how much how did they eat they ate satisfactorily 
as much as they it doesn't even say needed it says as much as they wanted so there was an abundance of food supplied to the multitude and verse 12 so when they had filled when they were filled he said to his disciples gather up the fragments that remain so that nothing is lost and verse 13 therefore they gathered them up and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which were left over by those who had eaten so you see the miracle taking place but for the miracle to take place someone needed to step out with the renewed mind or the spiritual mind and what the spiritual mind had to say in this case the spiritual mind said there is an option you know uh, there is a way where there was there is no way against all odds jesus is able to do something about our situation so the spiritual mind you know we're talking about keys to supernatural ministry so one of the keys is we must function with our spiritual mind and invite god into the impossible situation so the situation may seem impossible Right? We've hit the wall. We are at the end of the rope. What can happen now? Nothing can happen. But the spiritual mind will help us invite Jesus, the miracle worker, into that very situation. Okay, And then what will unfold? As we've seen, he is the God who could use the five barley loaves and the five fish and multiply it so that the multitudes had as much as they wanted and there was surplus, right? Twelve baskets uh, were gathered later on. So function with the spiritual mind and always pray, Lord, we need a miracle. Lord, we need the supernatural to manifest. We know that this is not the end. You can do something about my situation just think about that man Jairus he goes to Jesus and right at the point when he goes to Jesus people tell him hey stop praying man no no use your daughter just died but he doesn't stop he still trusts that this Jesus who I know can heal my daughter can also raise her from the dead okay so the spiritual mind thinks like that the renewed mind thinks of the possibilities of what God can do so use the spiritual mind live by the spiritual mind here's another beautiful incident that we read of um, in the life of Peter it's from Matthew 14 verses 22 to 33 uh, I want to request uh, someone else in the class to please read this passage for us Matthew 14 verses 22 to 23 please Matthew chapter 14, verses 22 to 23. Immediately, Jesus made his disciples get into the boat and go before him to the other side while he sent the multitudes away. And when he had sent the multitudes away, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. Now when evening came, he was alone there. Uh, okay, Rosalind, you will need to read uh, till 33. Okay. Yeah. Thank but the you. boat was now in the middle of the sea, tossed by the waves, for the wind was contrary. Now in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went to them, walking on the sea. And when the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were troubled, saying, It is a ghost. And they cried out of, for fear. But immediately Jesus spoke to them, saying, Be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. And Peter answered him and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So when he said, Come, and when Peter had come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. But when he saw that the wind was boisterous, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, he cried out, 
saying, Lord, save me. And immediately Jesus stretched out his hand and caught him and said to him, O oh, you of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they got into the boat, the wind ceased. Then those who were in the boat came and worshipped him, saying, Truly you are the Son of God. When they had crossed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret. Okay. Uh, Rosalind, uh, thank you. I think uh, we could um, stop here. Uh, so thank you so much for reading this account. And here we see that Jesus went out to pray. And after that, once he was done in the night, he um, he walked on the water to meet his disciples. Uh, but then, you know, it, it wasn't like uh, these were calm waters because verse 24 says, but the boat was now in the middle of, a, of the sea tossed by the waves for the wind was contrary. So it was a stormy night and Jesus was walking on the sea on this stormy night. And as the disciples looked at him, Verse 26, uh, they saw him walking on the sea. They were troubled, saying, it is a ghost. And they cried out for fear. So what, which mind are they processing this entire scene uh, with? It's their natural mind. So their natural mind, logical mind is saying, it's a stormy night and you can see, uh, you know, somebody like a human being walking on the sea must be a ghost. Okay, so their natural mind, verse 27. But immediately Jesus spoke to them saying, be of good cheer, it is I, do not be afraid. So obviously, you know, uh, they were familiar with his voice. So they had an option now to accept what they were hearing and know that this was actually Jesus. So in the set of disciples, okay, we only read about Peter responding to what Jesus said. Verse 28, and Peter answered and said, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So, seems like Peter is the only one in the group who is applying his spiritual mind. Okay, and why are we saying that? Because there is evidence. He looks at Jesus, he speaks to Jesus, he answers and says, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. So isn't it amazing? Uh, don't know what we would have done. Would we have had the courage to say, I also want to walk on water? I don't know. Uh, frankly, about myself, I don't think I would have had you know that kind of courage uh, uh, to imagine that like Jesus, I can also walk on water. But somehow Peter's mind functioned that way. So he was moving with the spiritual mind, just like Andrew, who saw the possibility. There's no food, but Jesus is here. So Jesus, five loaves, two fish, do what you can. In this case, Peter's renewed mind is saying, if this is Jesus, I think even I can walk on water. Okay, So the supernatural can take place. A miracle can take place. Limitations are not a big deal for God. And so he says, Lord, if it is you, command me to come. Um, okay, verse 26. Oh, oh sorry. Where was that? Verse 28, command me to come to you on the water. And so Jesus said, come. And when Peter had come out, come down out of the boat, he walked on the water to go to Jesus. Wow, that is supernatural. Peter asked Jesus and Jesus said, come. So, you know, some uh, people interpret this and say that, the word of God that he spoke created the worlds. The word of God, it's the, it, uh, he, we, he upholds the universe by the word of his power. So if the word of God can create and sust sustain the universe, the word of God was what Peter actually walked on that day. So the word come that Jesus spoke. 
is what that one word that peter walked on he walked on that come and that come did the miraculous for peter and he began to walk on the water that word come probably release the power release the ability of god for peter to be able to do what he did nobody has ever done this before apart from jesus you know, we've only read that jesus was walking on the water but here's a common person walking on water the impossible the supernatural based on the word which jesus spoke you know in response to his desire okay? again think about this this was not a plan that god proposed it was a plan which sort of bubbled up in his own spirit a possibility where he said hey why can't i do this why can't i do something for god now today you know many of us we could be thinking of doing so many great things for god but we are wondering is it even possible but see how jesus responded when peter had the faith and his spiritual mind spoke and said jesus can do this for me he can help me walk on water and he says lord command me to come to you jesus response was yes come and on that come here is peter walking okay but let's continue okay that was not all so so peter walked on the water verse 29 and verse 30 so unfortunate but when he saw that the wind was boisterous he was afraid and beginning to sink he cried out saying lord save me so somewhere there was a switching to the natural mind so peter is walking on water he is walking in a miracle you know he is walking on the word of god suddenly natural mind wait a minute am i walking on water that's not scientific you know that's not practical what is this it's not possible um and the winds and the waves it says so he looked at the natural circumstances and his mind his natural mind kicked in and said something is wrong here how can you continue to walk like this because what you're doing is not normal and then what happens he sinks isn't it was 30 he sinks he began to sink he cried out saying lord save me so even when he switched to his natural mind and uh, the miracle of god sort of stopped in his life jesus was gracious to him you know jesus reaches out to him and when he's sinking in that very situation in which he experienced a miracle before he pulls him out okay so god is always gracious but the point we want to understand is you see how miracles are possible as long as we have the renewed mind okay now renewed mind is not contrary to the natural mind natural mind brings us facts and figures we are saying yeah all of that is true but god you know we said this earlier god the supernatural can override the natural okay that's not to say that the natural does not exist yes the natural exists but the supernatural can override the natural and that's how the spiritual mind thinks but the natural mind will limit us with you know the um, um options that we have um uh, with with everything that we can process right in a uh, normal way okay so let's move forward now we we have an idea of how we must function in the renewed mind so quickly going back to the passage which we read earlier um first uh, corinthians 2 verses 11 through 16 let's uh, let's see what we can understand okay so i'm just turning to that passage here okay right so first corinthians 2 and verse 11 okay, it says for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him even so no one knows the things of god except the spirit of god so uh verse 11 
it says that um, the natural mind it cannot know the things of god okay only god knows uh, uh, god's spirit okay? the things of god except the spirit of god so because the spirit of god dwells with god um, the spirit of god is aware what god is thinking or in other words what god's will is so our question right now is how do i have the mind of god or how do i receive this uh, spiritual mind or maintain this uh, renewed mind so that i can think the way god thinks i can know what god's will is and begin to move according to the spiritual mind and not just my natural mind so point we got from verse 11 is the holy spirit knows the mind of god so if i want to know what god is thinking the holy spirit has to do a work for me to be able to receive you know what god is uh, saying so verse 12 verse 12 is now we have received not the spirit of the world but the spirit who is from god that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by god so uh, we are told that the holy spirit has been given to us to help us know the mind of god in other words the holy spirit reveals the mind of god to us so what is the mind of god the ways of god the thoughts of god okay so we want to know what is god thinking now let's say i'm praying about my future and i have no clue i look i cannot look into the future but what is god thinking about my future would he like me to be here in this city or would he want me to move to another city what would god want me to do uh, as far as my ministry is concerned what will my family look like so these are all questions that i'm asking and god has a will okay god's mind has thought about these matters and god has uh, you know a certain path for me to take what i'm saying is the holy spirit can reveal what god is thinking god's ways for me okay to me so we have that privilege so as a child of god i can know the will of god and the ways of god as revealed by the holy spirit to me so verse 13 these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches but which the holy spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual so the holy spirit teaches us okay he speaks uh, he can get the inputs of you know what god is thinking and he can teach those things to us so god spirit um not by man's wisdom teach what not according to what man's wisdom teaches but which the holy spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual so uh the holy spirit okay he understands and he imparts that into our spirit man verse the verse um 14 but the natural man does not receive the things of the spirit of god for they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned so the plans of god's heart or god's mind we are told that holy spirit knows holy spirit reveals and where does he put it he puts it into our spirit spiritual mind and verse 14 says the natural mind cannot understand them the natural mind cannot even discern them okay as we've seen earlier what will the natural mind say no there are limitations but the spirit spiritual mind can receive these things and the holy spirit will uh, reveal it to our spiritual mind and verse 15 but he who is spiritual judges all things yet he himself is rightly judged by no one so there are things which must be spiritually discerned and only the renewed mind can do that if we don't carry the renewed mind then it's very difficult you know for us to understand and receive what uh, god's spirit is telling us and verse 16 it says we have the mind of christ so we've already been given every believer already has the capacity 
you know to understand receive and walk according to the uh, plans and purposes of god so the ability is there but then the obedience and the response you know is uh, what is required on our part so we have the ability we can receive uh, the information about god's ways and and plans we must renew our mind and function with that renewed mind okay holy spirit is able to reveal it to us so uh, at every point we need to be able to utilize our renewed mind or our spiritual mind so um, another thing that i want to um, throw in here is the fact that for us to renew our mind you know it's very as romans 12 2 says that we must spend time with the in the word of god don't be conformed to the ways of this world but be transformed by the renewing of our mind so by the word of god our minds can be transformed so in the last uh, couple of sessions we talked about faith okay and faith how does it come it comes by hearing and hearing the word of god so as i spend time in the word of god you know i begin to see oh you know jesus is a healer Jesus is a miracle worker. Jesus does the impossible. Okay, God's word carries the authority. It carries the power uh, to to work in our lives. So as I begin to see these things, my mind is being renewed. It's as if I always like to use this example. If there's a wall, a brick wall, okay, and you want to rebuild it in a strong way, what would what would you do? you would tear down that brick wall and rebuild it with maybe you know cement blocks or some some other material which is stronger uh the same thing applies to our minds we have a pattern of thinking but as i am studying the word as i'm meditating the word what happens i replace those bricks with cement blocks okay so my mind is gradually being rebuilt by the word of god and the possibilities as per the word of god and then you know it's a lot easier for the holy spirit to um impart his ideas and his thoughts into my mind because now what's happening to my mind you know i have a renewed mind with which i am functioning uh, and you know faith arises and i'm able like andrew i can go to jesus and say lord such is the situation but here are the resources can you do something about it like peter i can look at god and say god i believe you know ask me to walk on the water i'll be able to do it and at the word of the lord which says come i'll be able to step out so renew our minds by the word of god and also in the same passage first corinthians 2 we see earlier you know prior to verse 11 we see that no i has seen you know no ear has heard no mind has conceived the things that god has prepared for us but he has revealed by his spirit it says so even by the work of the holy spirit the possibilities of god can be imparted to us so i'll just talk a little bit about the practical application and close off for this morning so when i pray for myself take time to pray in the spirit take time to pray according to the word of god and the spiritual mind will begin to reveal you know the grand plans and purposes and the will of god uh, to me now if i only function with my natural mind you know i'm not praying about it i don't apply the word or i don't uh, maybe pray in the spirit and let the holy spirit impart his will to me what happens i become limited okay so then i don't know what to pray for personally or let's say we are ministering to people people come to us and they say pastor you know i am in this financial crisis what do i do and uh, with our natural mind we might say close down the business okay or just stop what you're doing but as i begin to tap into my renewed mind my spiritual mind maybe i take generally i do this when i'm praying for people i don't know what to pray sometimes uh, and i was just recently in the previous class sharing this example last week 
uh, one of the students that I know, um, you know, went to study to uh, some other country and she was messaging me every day. And so as soon as she reached there, there was another impossibility. She was supposed to fill in a form, uh, but due to uh, some documentation issues, there was no access to that form. Okay, so she said, Pastor, if I don't fill this form, you know, I won't get an on-campus job and so many other things will be hindered. So when I saw that message, I was so upset and so sad for her. I didn't know what to reply. So I thought to myself, I'm just going to pray in tongues. Okay, I won't reply now. I'll take a couple of hours. So, uh, you know, I, I prayed in the spirit. I prayed for her and I said, Lord, I, and then uh, I messaged her back. And as I was messaging back, certain things came to my heart. A scripture came. I put that down. A prayer came to me, you know, a prayer of authority and command. So I wrote down that prayer. I said, Pray like this in the name of Jesus, you know, speak to that form in the name of Jesus. So it all just stirred up within my spirit and I put it down for her uh, and I sent the message to her. And the next day, you know, she messaged and she said, when I woke up uh, or something like that, I saw your message, Pastor, and I felt so strongly that I must pray that prayer. So she read that scripture, she declared the scripture and she uh, prayed that prayer of command over the form and uh, you know she said it was a miracle i tried opening that form so many times it never opened but the moment i prayed the prayer the form opened uh, and i filled it in i gave it in you know now she has uh, a job and uh, many other things have moved because she was able to fill in that very very important uh, online form so it was supernatural the moment i read the message in my natural mind i thought so sad she went all the way and she will not be able to get a job you know she will not be able to do this she will not be but then as i prayed in the spirit i feel like the holy spirit imparted the will of god to me and said no you got to pray this is not right this hindrance has to be uprooted so take authority that's what I, I i got in my spirit so i wrote out that prayer of authority for her and immediately she said, I, I declared the scripture, I read the prayer out, I commanded the form and it just opened up. So it was uh, supernatural. So I'm just saying, whether we pray for ourselves or we're praying for others, take time to function out of the renewed mind and you will see the supernatural. Okay, so let's close off uh, this morning's class. I want to request one of us to please pray and then we can wrap up the class. Yes, please, Jeffina. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you under the name of Jesus. We thank you for this beautiful day and for the beautiful class we had, Jesus. God, we thank you for giving us the mind of Christ, Lord. And God, as we are listening, uh, whatever decisions we take on this life, no matter whatever the situation is, help us to work through the spiritual mind, Lord. Help us to focus on your word first. Help us to keep you as the priority. And help us to always uh, make every decision on this life with you, Jesus, by your words. And whatever we do, whatever we say, wherever we go, Help us to bring glory to you by following your words, God. Help us to build this mind, Jesus. Help us to get deeper and deeper and deeper into your word and to always rely on it so that we can live a successful life with you down here on this earth. Be with us and guide us. We thank you for sending Jesus. We thank you for your word and we thank you for every good thing. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, Jafina, and thank you, everyone. God bless you. Uh, you will have your assignments up very soon. So please uh, watch out for that. And uh, uh, yeah, hope you're enjoying this course on uh, the keys to supernatural ministry. God bless you all. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you.